<clears throat> two. Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and WNST.net. We're doing Baltimore Positive. We're at State Fair in Catonsville eating delicious Benedicts. Um, You've eaten. Damien and I can't wait. So can we gotta, we got to move this segment along because right. well, this, this segment is standing between segment. us and some good eggs right, Benedict. All right, all right. So, so, so uh, yeah, go ahead. I want to get into this because we talked about mayor and the things the next mayor is going to have and the story that needs to be portrayed. Who is the next mayor in your mind, Damien? I like the word amateur, and my uncle, who is uh, Dylan O'Brien's from Catonsville, went on to write uh, Sons of Anarchy's music and the, the, the new uh, bunch of film music, My Name is Earl, all that stuff. Uh, he says to me, um, he says to me, Damien, this town has so much energy, so much positivity, but you need somebody that loves the city and wants to love the job. The word amateur, I always thought was a terrible thing to call somebody an amateur. I think the city needs an amateur as a mayor, and by amateur I mean somebody that l the word comes for the love of, uh, for the love of, from the love of. So wants to love the job, it's got to love the city. Let's start there. Let's start there. But I think we need part engineer, part marketing person. It would be nice to have somebody that knew all – Baltimore such an influencer town. In other words, if you can nail down – the African-American community leadership and the Jewish community leadership and the Catholic community leadership. Those are the three things this town was built on. They're all three historic communities globally. The First Catholic Church, Frederick Douglass. All, you know, the Jewish community here is stronger than anywhere else in the country. If you can get those people focused and understand who can help you connect the dots inside of government and out, you know, that gives you a big head start. So culturally, you got to be in the game. You got to love those people. You got to love those communities. Uh, and once you do that, they start telling you that they start wayfinding for you. Hey, you ought to be talking to Rachel Monroe, not me. You ought to be, uh, you know, you ought to be talking to Zach McDaniel, not me. You ought to be, you know. So they will help you wayfind, and then you need to pull those principal thought leaders around you and have them activate their networks. For your vision. It's about people. It's about people. It's the what biggest Dutch net said. Possible, it's what Dutch right? said. Yeah, it's what Dutch said. It is said. what Dutch said. And, and we have this great group. Uh, you, may, you mentioned Rachel Monroe and others. We have this great group of people that are, you know, the Matt Gallagher's, the, uh, the, the Michael Criers. I mean, we got this great group of folks who are really dedicated and believe in this city. You, and you talk about. You just got a call from Ben Jealous, right? Guy wants to run for mayor. Right, well, I, I, I can't confirm or deny that, but I, I think people are saying. I was talking to Nestle. Does he even live in Baltimore? <laughs> so listen, does, he, does he even yes. live in Baltimore? I'm sure he'll appreciate the plug. He, look, you're Ben Jealous. Here's my advice for you. You're, ne you're Nestor Aparicio. People are talking about running for mayor. Go talk to Matt Gallagher. Right, like go talk to Cullum O'Connor, go talk to Michael Cryer, go talk to people that have been in the city when we've won the Super Bowl or have gotten Under Armour to expand or had been there for the big wins, and they will tell you sort of what's possible. I don't want to talk to any of these people. I don't want to talk to Ben Jealous until he's talked to Matt Gallagher, because all I'm going to do is say, "Why are you talking to me? Talk to Matt Gallagher. He knows so much more than you uh, about the city of Baltimore and how to some quick fixes and some." Uh, good long home runs we can uh, aim for. So, you know, uh, I, that's my advice to people. It's, it's, uh, you got to get out there and start talking to people. And, and Malia, you know, Malia and I disagree all the time, as uh, uh, Nestor and I do, your, your former guest. It's like, who writes the questions? The politicians write the questions. The pollster writes the questions. Why don't we have some West Baltimoreans write the questions? Why don't we well, have I, somebody in uh, Govins write the questions? Well, I think, I think Malia addressed that. I think she – it's funny. I think she would actually agree with you on that, and she's looking at things like Be More Philly. That's right. And I'm, what's the I'm L.A. spotlight – L.A., yeah. where they're really taking civic That's engagement right. You're right. to another level. You're and right. I, and I think right. what, Ma, what Malia laid out for us was that whoever it is, because I think it's way too early to do the horse race thing, whether it's a Ben Jealous, a Nestor Aparicio, a, a Jack Young, a Brandon they Scott, all need to get in. a Bill Ferguson. We need a real discussion by a lot of people who care about the city. And I think what you said, Damien, is at its core, it has to be – Someone that when you look at them, you say, you know what? All BS aside, that person, he, him or her, 
really loves this city. And they're getting up right. every loves day to make city. it better. That's getting right. up every right. single right. day to spread the seed of ah. how can I how can I four years from now leave this gig better than I found it and not richer than I found it, not better connected wow. than I found well it, said. but. I, it's astonishing to me. Can we talk about the, well the, the, the Catherine Pugh for this one? It, it's mind-boggling to me that you'd have a gig like that, knowing for the rest of your life if you did a good job, you, you would have that for – I mean, O'Malley, all things aside, like I agree, disagree, you work with him, Democrat, whatever. I, I found all my old Ehrlich stuff, people to think that I'm a Republican basher. Bob Ehrlich was at my wedding, you, you, you called me my wife. I, yeah, I'm, Great I'm, competitor. And, 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 a, and a Catonsville Arbutus guy, right? Well, a guy correct. from the side of town, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I talk about Catherine Pugh, and I say, well, for, for her, what did she do every day? You know, what, what, what was the job? What, would the, what did Governor Schaefer or Mayor Schaefer do every day? What did Martin O'Malley do every day? What did Delisandra do every day? What does the mayor of okay, Detroit I've do never, every day? I've never understood this. But I said it's the greatest well, story. What is the job? It's Where's the job story description well, We talk about that. It's the greatest story in America. There's so many stories going out there. It's the time when everybody is on their social media. They're not. They don't. They're not. They're not watching Mary Bubala on no. television. I agree with that. It's on. It, they're watching the fight on Facebook right. or the fight uh, on, on you know on social media. So the mayor's got to get out and meet the people Correct. of Baltimore and Into tell the their story over and over again. We are a contentopolis. We have so much content in this town and in a town in a in a world where so many people are starving for content that means something that's authentic. We got it. Seinfeld will tell you they got banks and. Coffee shops in New York City, that, and they got a ball club. That's all they got. They don't have real people that are struggling or winning or losing or crying or laughing. It's it's like it's it's. But all a you have to do is walk world. down Frederick Road here, and you'll see all that between here and and GL Shacks, literally. That's like, right. uh, and that's just the Catonsville story. We all have and, these stories, and it's happening. And 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 I think we be, we know that it's going to happen in the city. We know that Port Covington is real. This incredible private investment we know the trade point over in the baltimore county but literally on, on the on the city line you got all the reinvestment in the markets we've got these great things happening the other thing that the next mayor has to do and you ask me about whether it was my leadership or the people that i worked with certainly kevin kamenitz and this this will make well you Damien inherited smile. something well, me, that was pretty well built oh right? well built but but <laughs> here's where i'm going with this is the mayor has to be outraged at incompetence. The mayor has to be, and no one was ever more outraged at incompetence than my friend Kevin Kamenetz. Uh, he, he believed... I've been outraged for 20 years at the Orioles' yeah. incompetence on he, the radio. He every day. Believed, I can out incompetence. I've seen a lot of it. He believed that government <laughs> should work and be there for the people and work together with the people to create jobs, as Dutch said, to invest in infrastructure, to make sure the schools are good. Listen, I've been re you've been reading a lot of articles. I've been reading a lot of articles about cities, what it takes to turn around. They all start with education. So sure. let's, let's cut yeah, to the chase. Yeah, and save yeah, them. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Oh, you want to get into it? I'll right. say this. Go ahead. Baltimore <laughs> County, yes, it, it's a, it is a it, it is well built and constructed, but it's a it's not nimble. It's kind of like a tank, and we are moving in very fast times. In Baltimore County, we have an executive that's put forward ran as a progressive, put forward kind of a uh, milk toast Jim Brochin budget. We're trying to hit people behind the tree on taxes. It was a big chance for Baltimore County to go. You know, this place was sort of came together on what divided us, sort of people running out of the city, people separating from themselves. If you read the sign in Towson about the courthouse, the word separation appears three times. That has got to change. And we need a school system for all our kids, not just kids in Catonsville, where I grew up, or Towson, where I moved my family. We need schools all over the county that perform for people. We had a big chance here with this county. Well, okay, okay, I'm going to disagree with Damien okay, a ahead. little bit there. Go ahead. Let's fight as, about Baltimore as someone, County. As some, yeah, <laughs> although it's Baltimore positive. But, we, again, Whoa. we can talk no, about no, Baltimore No, 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 no. we got to talk about right. problems here. As, as someone – This is where as the PR – I get. No, no. As someone, as someone who chaired County Executive Wyshevsky's Budget Commission, I think his budget <laughs> addresses all of those issues. And I think, realistically, it, did do, it does do – what it needed to do within certain parameters. In other words, there is the first income tax increase in 30 years. Long overdue. That was brave. Listen, folks, listen, folks, I was at that table. We should have raised taxes 
during both for, with both of the executives that I work. But they're trying to get reelected. Um, but uh, I mean, I mean, that's whatever, a political. That, that's so, me being a resident. What's so, the value prop? So Johnny's 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 taking those steps. I think Johnny recognizes that we continue to have school issues, infrastructure issues. So I think his budget is a very aggressive budget, and I actually would say a more forward-looking budget than many that I was part of drafting and putting together. So, Well, let me talk like a mayor yeah, for a minute yeah. here. And but Mr. Educator, Don, w w on your tombstone, it won't say county executive. It might say father, Kate, but it's going to say educator. Uh, that's – Okay. That, that's what you. Fair enough. That's what you went to school for. It's what you spent the first thirty-five years of your professional life doing. Yeah. You're still here trying Hopefully to educate. Hopefully, it says me. husband, dad, and granddad, then educator. All but right. okay. Every time I get but together, they're all educators. Every <laughs> time I get together with a bunch of wonks, right? And we talk about Johnny O. We talk about taxes and all this stuff. We're going to raise taxes. Well, why? Well, we got to make the schools better. Well, I mean, when do we talk about schools? We talk, our kids need to be educated. Let's talk about schools. Then. Why does education always go to the bottom? And I don't mean the bottom, but I mean in this country, we'd rather fight well, wars and have this creep run the country. Why are we going to? Why, why are we? Gonna, why, 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 let's why start with facts, and then I'll let J Damian rebut it. Fifty-five percent in Baltimore County of the Baltimore County budget goes toward education. Wow. 55%. How much of Baltimore City? Or do you not know I that? Don't, I don't know that. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah. okay, so 55% of all taxes raised go to education go to in Baltimore County. Teachers, parks, schools, Correct. facility. Community what what college. else does that mean? Community college. What, what, give me everything under that umbrella. No, when you put, I'm just talking about Towson University get any of that because it's in, I'm, I'm only not asking. Not much. No, okay. Stevenson. Not much. No, that, Basically. Like that? Okay. But if we, if we had some Community break, colleges in K-12. I got a lot of hope for this guy, Johnny Oshevsky. I think he's a brave guy. He did have a, a big, uh, uh, he did make some moves in this budget. I'm just saying it's a time to go big. Let's look where we are right now. We're going to put a brand new high school in Lansdowne, right? Which is what? Is that currently under capacity down there? Is it over capacity? It's, it's pretty much at capacity. Catonsville, over capacity. Correct. Woodlawn, under capacity. Under, correct. So we're going to build a new school in the southwest. We're gonna, your ta uh, people's tax dollars are going to go to pay for that. Uh, I guarantee you when, that, when that's all said and done, you're going to have uh, – over capacity in Catonsville, you'll be at capacity in Lansdowne, and you'll be under capacity in Woodlawn. Nobody wants to. Nobody wants to have one school system for everybody. They want a balkanized school system in this in this local government. It drives me crazy. It's a very. It's it a was very, a big chance to break that open. It's it's all is that saying. race divided? Certainly, race. It's race and class, and it's a complicated issue. It's probably a complete series on Baltimore positive. Well, we didn't have any racial uh, problems in Dundalk. Okay. But it's, yes, it's race uh, and class, just, yeah. and, it's, and it's economic development, and it's housing values. It's all of those things. So we, we, we know there are challenges for the next mayor. Damien, you, you have you've worked for some really quality people in your life. And before we came on, I said to you, um, talk a little bit about the folks you've worked for and what you take away in terms of leadership. Talk about Baltimore Positive. Yeah, Baltimore yeah. Positive. My first Who guy I worked ever worked for, for was uh, Nathaniel J. McFadden, went on to be the majority leader, uh, the highest ranking African American official uh, in the state Senate. How'd you get that gig? I was interviewing to, uh, with a Republican guy down here in southwest Baltimore, and then uh, Mike Miller funded a small budget for like a law clerk like me to go and. 80s? Corral. When is this? Late 80s? This is 1997. 90s, oh, late 90s. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, Nathaniel McFadden was the chairman of the city senators. We had 10 senators then. We have six now. We had regional senators. They represented uh, the southwest Baltimore and southwest Baltimore County, things like that. What I loved about this guy is I would sit in there. He would eat lunch by himself. Lobbyists would come by. My job was, ironically, to push the lobbyists <laughs> out of the door, right, and to push the guys that would ultimately write the wire for David, si David Simon, those reporters, Bill Zorzi, push them out of the way. The one time I saw him have people in his office was, and interrupt his lunch, was a little bag lunch, was a bunch of school kids. And they said, we want to name a state dinosaur. It's the most absurd <laughs> concept, right? <laughs> And I go with Stegosaurus. Yeah, yeah, it's the Astrodon like. Johnson eyes, the state dinosaur. <laughs> and he used that as a way to educate all of these kids about how the process worked. They came down for a bill. We passed a bill to have a state dinosaur called the Astrodon Johnson eye, which was founded in Laurel. And I just love the fact that that guy eschewed the insiders, welcomed the outsiders. And that's when I started learning those are the people with the stories. I don't want to tell listen the to story. what you just said, though. 
That's great. I'm well, gonna, somebody to, that's getting paid to the sit insiders, in front. welcome the no, outsiders. No, no, no. But what it is, shoot the insiders means the people that are getting paid to sit in front of me. I'm not really interested in. Yeah. I'm interested in the people that I'm here yeah. who pay me yeah. to represent them. Well, yeah. that, that's, that, that, that's another, literally what and, you do. And yeah. Damien will tell you because he's lived it on both sides. Is the the, the real challenge of money and politics. Oh. And when you get into the next mayor's race, actually, Nestor, you asked, and, and God bless her, she just gave me a direct answer. Nestor said, can you win a race for mayor with no money? She said, no. Yeah. No. I mean, Barbara McCall says you, you can't go to a gunfight with a, w- <laughs> w- with a water pistol. With a yeah. water pistol. That was yeah. the way she put That's it. Fair. So, you know, and folks will, will, by this time, when this airs, they will have listened to But money to ain't center. everything. Money's not everything, but it, but it is some of it. So, with McFadden, you saw this willingness to be open to others. Clarence Who else? Blount, Clarence Blount is another majority leader I work for in the state senate, a West Baltimore educator uh, and um, another African-American leader. He, he was terrific because I remember we had Senate Bill 509, which was, uh, Nestor, your side of town went bonkers over right. Dutch's efforts to try to use eminent domain to take down some of those uh, terrible properties and the conditions people were living in. And, you know, we had Rick and Polaria was the invention of Rick and Polaria. Came down to testify in Annapolis, just going bonkers. And Blount stood there listening through the entire testimony. They had busloads of people. He stood there the whole time and just was present and gave them their fullest attention. And he didn't like a word that was coming out of their mouths. He knew what some of this venom was coming from. But he let them have their day, and he just absorbed it. And I just learned about sort of senatorial comportment gubernatorial comportment, the way you hold yourself. Kind of like yourself. the president That's acts every day, like, like <laughs> that, right? <laughs> that sort of leadership. Wait, which president would that be? That, that kind of leader, <laughs> the kind of leadership we're talking about. Right. Let me Tolerance, tell you, let me tell patience, you about understanding, <laughs> let looking me tell at you all about, the facts, that, that sort of thing. Let me tell you right? about the, 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 the first white guy I ever worked for was a former judge that uh, Don worked for, also uh, Baltimore County Executive Jim Smith, I, I, sort of ironically, again, gave me a book called how to break all the rules. And this was a judge saying to, to me, like, you know, you've got a certain talent to get outside of the box. Run with it. Go with it. But what he taught me was my entire business. And I think the one good thing you'll see out of the one, one of the legacies of uh, what's recently happened in, in Baltimore will be this fund that he created, right. which is to get money into those neighborhoods that Don's talking about, not the waterfront neighborhoods. He taught me. The way you get around the same old boy politicians and the same old way of doing things is you go straight to the community, you, you sell the community on your vision, they will correct you and give you a new vision, you take that vision and you roll over it. Because it's opposition. not your idea, it's their idea. Yeah. yeah I mean, look, look at what yeah. happened. And that's my whole business is people are like, oh, you're a lobbyist? I'm like, no, I'm not a lobbyist. Uh, on occasion, I, I have to register as a lobbyist, but my real role is is getting the will of the people to roll over the same old nonsense that doesn't work. And that's how you get great communities like downtown Columbia. That's how you get amazing tourist attractions and global hubs like National Harbor. That's how you get Port Covington and Harbor East. That's how you get a Towson that really cooks yep. and hums. Well, that's how you get Harbor Place and the aquarium and the science yeah, center built well, 40 years ago. Yeah, and no, I, no bet you, I bet you Jim Smith learned a lot of that from Schaefer. A very close friend of his. And, and it's fun, It's interesting that, that Damien, and, and, I, and I know we're, we'll wrap up here. we got a few things left to talk about. But Damien mentioned Jim Smith. I, I've been with Jim about a month. And I don't remember the specific issues. How well did you uh, know him when you went to work uh, for him? Not at all. I mean, I mean you, you, you were literally a su- you were a school teacher. You yeah, were shake, a, oh, yeah, I was. You were at that time, I was an area superintendent, yeah. right? But I just oh, actually, I had retired. And was working as a consultant, but not well. It's shake hands, hi, hi, judge. How are you? The way judge? the Catonsville high principal just, would know the county ju- executive, exactly, just just to right. say hi. But in the first month, there were two or three issues where he could have chosen door A or door B. And door B was the better choice. Door A was the more politically safer. expedient, safer choice. Each and every time, he chose door B. And I can remember saying to my wife, this is really fascinating. This guy has made three choices, each time choosing the one that's not as politically expedient as I the was one always he could pointing have. to the other. Because right, Damien was pointing to the <laughs> other. Because he felt he well, was convicted. I asked right? him. Yes. I asked him. I said to him. I couldn't take it anymore. When I said, I said, boss, you got to tell me. I'm really impressed. Tell me what's behind that. And he said, Don, here's what I've learned in my life. Every day if you do the right thing and you make the right choice, the politics will take care of itself. And I think that's what the next that's mayor 
needs to remember. The politics, that's what Jim Smith said, will take care of itself. So, listen, as we wrap up, you've been out there on the uh, president. You, you've done this Iowa thing, man. You slept all over the country for Martin O'Malley. Tell us what it's like out there for 21 candidates right now. You've been at 1% Well, and the, the other thing is you knew there was a, you, you were going to have a hard time winning, right? Like, no, no. You never believed that? No, no. That? Damien was a believer. Uh, I was a true believer. <laughs> I, I felt like that, sh- that, that Hillary well, they all going to have a hard time winning. I fe- Reality I right felt that Hil- I felt that <laughs> Hillary was going to that lost to Barack Obama. If she didn't have it then, she wasn't going to have it again. I had no idea right. that some wild-haired <laughs> U.S. senator out of Vermont that wasn't even in my party it wasn't even a was going to steamroll everybody <laughs> right. uh, and just. Why build did that happen in your mind? What was Bernie's message that got because me down to the Royal Farms Arena because for his thing? And when I walked into the Bernie rally, I didn't. I, you know, this was at the time where I'm keeping my politics to myself, right? Because I was sticking to sports, you know, like I've done here. But I went to Bernie's rally in Baltimore. There were 3,200 Birkenstock. Mount Washington, nice people, and I thought the people here are way too nice. And I and four months later, this ass clown wins. And now here we you know, go. Like you know, Bernie, <laughs> here we go. Bernie Sanders. You talk about money. Bernie Sanders was able to do something nobody else was, right. which is get twenty seven dollars a month from people uh, because the world that Hillary that's Clinton, the money the world had, yeah. had the, the Hillary Clinton had built and been a part of had broken open and was seen for what it was, which is a little bit hollow, a little bit of a sellout for the ne- next generations. And, and so he took $27 from all these disaffected Democrats and independents, even some Republicans. He bundled it up and gave it to the media companies that are owned by Wall Street, which is how he raised the money. So you got to understand that running for president is a business. And I learned that the hard way. I'm and that huge. is about the money. So that's oh, what Barbara absolutely. Mikulski says um, to me. And so he did it a diff- different way. But money is critical. But, I, you know, here's, the way, here's what I learned. Is that w- the way Barack Obama did it? Was it, was it about money he for had, him? He, he had, didn't start with money, right? He had Pritzker money, but he also had the lower dollar grassroots money. He built money. this incre- incredible Craig social Craig 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 organization. Craig 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 this is, this is, your, this is where you'll get it for me. Is I was at uh, the ABC News presidential debate, the Democratic primary debate, and uh, everybody has these important issues they're bringing out. Uh, it's we're wondering why it's on the weekend, like it's competing with football games, all these other things. It's the same weekend as The Force Awakens, right? So like Disney owns <laughs> ABC News. Disney owns ABC News. Disney owns the new Star Wars franchise. ESPN. <laughs> Hillary Clinton closes the debate with May the Force Be With You. Despite everything that was said that was fairly important, the number one quote of the entire debate was May the Force Be With You. What a big win that was for ABC. What a big win that was for Disney. And once you understand that, you can get to understand the question now, which is can the American media afford to not have another four years of Donald Trump? Can the American media find another way to have New York Times subscriptions through the roof? Everybody watching MSNBC breaking over news, Fox. Breaking news. Right. Breaking you know, news. How can the media afford not to realize right. Morning Donald Joe, Trump. highest ratings ever. Rachel right. Maddow, so, highest ratings ever. So they, right. they hate well, him. I'd move my, my company right. from sports to politics because that's you go to what Iowa, we're talking about. You go to Iowa, you have a deep conversation like you've never had in Maryland. These, these, these constituents know six, seven, eight levels deep on every issue they quiz you on them you get to level two they move on but also you'll meet this lovely lady and she'll be on your side and then she reminds you hey man i got an afghan uh, you know i got some quilts you know can you buy some quilts so it's like the whole thing is a hustle well, america <laughs> is a business you know and so it's you know <laughs> damien you O'Donnell gotta, getting worked up every you gotta realize <laughs> and that he's a progressive and that's what i tell yeah i can tell people man if you want to run for office at the local level the state you got to understand that this country is a business and most people are re- enthusiastic about that See, i still thought it was a democracy and it was about social and like it's, it's not all to it's all built to support capitalism it's all built to support uh rich people People that have means. People have money. Yeah. They, they run the place. It right all now. goes to the top. Well, how are we going to do this in the Baltimore side? Where does the money – how does the money affect Baltimore? How did the money affect Pew and Stephanie Rawlings-Blake and Sheila? <laughs> like, where's the money going to be the next 16 months where the Ravens don't well, right sell now, the money's on Jack, here's, you know, Jack Young uh, will likely do what Sheila Dixon did. I was the wrong end of that. It, I was behind Kiefer, and, boy, I'd love to know what the story would be like if Kiefer were mayor. But – It'd be a so lot better, I. right? 
So, but I love you know Keith. what? Sh- what Sheila was able to do when O'Malley got elevated was she was able to take that group of people I talked to those three communities and lock them up, lock all their money up. Jack Young should be able to do that if he wants to, and that'll make him a prohibitive. Yeah, if favor. he wants to, that that will be the big question. That'll make him a prohibitive favorite. Uh, you also so you become a favorite the minute you get the money. That's what you're telling me. Oh, yeah. You scare people off. Yeah, Pew, you scare Pew other people off. Pew was in the process of scaring a lot of people Yeah, that would have been over. She had a million bucks. That's what I, I did told an amazing Nestor job. and I talked Not about to mention that. how much she stole. It would have, that would have been over. <laughs> that, yeah, that was personal. That's another issue. Listen, <laughs> we never let any Baltimore positive. We don't let our guests get away without knowing. We know at KO Public Affairs, we know what you do, making a difference all over the country. What does Damien O'Darty and his family do to kick back, relax? What, what's fun in the O'Darty family? I see this on Facebook. Uh, I know the answer to this. We love being outside, you know. I mean, that's the one thing that I never really f- had. Uh, I never really understood. I lived in the middle of Pataps- Patapsco State Park. And never park. went for a walk in the park? Never went for a walk <laughs> in the park. And all I was focused on was this whole story in my head. Were you afraid of the snakes? Because that's what always keeps me away. No, I think I was just trying to achieve and be some person that I thought other people wanted me to be. Significant enough to be on my show one day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I made it there. I made it. So you're, a music, outside. you're a music guy. I love the music. Yeah, yeah. I love music. Yeah. I'm, 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 I don't know how to play a lick. I just love to pay attention. Prince or Zappa? Well, you got one here. Which one? Man, that's a good question. I'm a Baltimore guy, so I have to go with Zappa. Yeah, go Zappa. All right, it's fine. But I'm a, I'm a, my, my buddy Marty Knotts got me into Jerry Garcia, and it's hard not to love Freddie Mercury. By the way, Stone State's out this morning, July there 3rd. There you go. Mick, 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 Mick is back. Mick All this right here at State Fair. You have one concert to see. You got one left. You can only see one more concert in your life. Who do you go see? I grew up listening to a band called Widespread Panic. And oh, I you're would, a widespread guy. Yeah, which is uh, sort of a jam band and uh, awfully, terribly white of me. But uh, I, uh, I, that's what I would like to do. I think it's been a great edition of Baltimore Positive. I made Day. Don really uncomfortable today. <laughs> Don, <laughs> no, no, I I I got Don got wants no part of me with Freeman Rabowski two weeks from today. <laughs> but we're, so we're taking next week off for the holiday. Taking right? next week off. but uh, Give everybody a little lo- lo- re- yeah. recap of Barbara and Damien. Yeah. Hey, well, can I tell you something? So, yeah. I'm, so I'm out in Aspen. UMBC in the house. I go to the Ideas Festival. The Surgeon General of the United States there. He's a, obviously a physician. He's a UMBC graduate. I raised my hand. I said, how do we get more people like you, African-American scientists in STEM and pipeline? And he said, we need more Freeman Rabowski. Oh. Freeman, uh, and he said, uh, he said the day that he tweeted out about UMBC's upset against UVA was the biggest blow up right. he's ever had right. on the Surgeon right. General's right. Twitter feed. So Freeman Rabowski, to me, is, is the most positive thing we have in this country. I mean, he is, I mean, I wish, I wish he were into politics because oh. he is an amazing leader. He's everything you want in somebody. And he just gives and gives and gives and gives. I, I, I never met w- him. Without a doubt, I'll bring the pom-poms. Uh, May the 30th here at State Fair in Catonsville, 9 a.m. in the morning. If you have never had a chance to listen to, say hi to Freeman Rabaski, you are in for a treat because I'm with Damien. I simply think I'm, I'm – in the front row of the Freeman Rabowski fan club. Uh, just incredible <laughs> on every, every Is level. Is Pete Cringe going to give me a UMBC shirt to wear? I got a fresh I, one. I, I, I don't you know. You have to, you'll have to ask yeah, Pete. Talk to Pete. Deserve <laughs> one. You knew about UMBC before anybody. I, I have my, my gold UMBC hair on fire little thing that I might wear. You can wear it that day. Damien well, O'Darty. Get into this race yeah. and shake things up, <laughs> Nestor. It'd be, it'd be a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> shake his hand. Damien O'Darty. You go. KO <laughs> Public Affairs. This is what, Nestor? Baltimore positive? Don's never going to speak to me again. We're <laughs> WNST.net, AM 1570, WNST Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking Baltimore positive. Have a great holiday.